Hello and welcome to another episode of a Brothers Creed podcast. We're going to talk about motivation, experiences, and we explore the world around us. We're the Thomas Brothers. I'm Ethan. And I'm Jared. And today we're talking about the credo, another one of our credo episodes, and which is a, an aspect of your personal creed, uh, one of these virtues that you can add in. Uh, the credo today is of resource, resourcefulness. So how resourceful are you? Uh, and what does that mean? How can we add it into our um, our creeds? Are you like MacGyver type? Is that is that what that means? So you, you're basically MacGyver? You can you make a, a, a bomb out of a gum and uh, <laughs> a paper clip or something? <laughs> I never actually watched. I, I think my generation, I was a little bit too old for MacGyver generation. Or I really? should say young. Yeah. We never really watched MacGyver. We watched Stargate SG-1, but we never watched MacGyver. Yeah, I guess I went back as kind of an adult and watched, but but we're going to spoil it because I'm actually going to use that as my example. Oh, so. okay. All right. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. All right, let's do it. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Either you're somebody or you're nobody. You're not the devil. You're practice. Okay, so we got a little bit of a teaser in the uh, in the intro there, um, but today we're talking about resourcefulness. So I think resourcefulness is is. It's really interesting because there's like a couple of different facets of resourcefulness. I think resourcefulness can come from just kind of making stuff up on the fly. Resourcefulness can come from previous knowledge or it can come from, I think sometimes resourcefulness can be complete luck uh, to a certain extent. So uh, being resourceful uh, from a definition standpoint means having the ability to find creative and effective solutions to challenges or problems using the resources available to you. Um, resourcefulness involves thinking outside the box, adapting to changing circumstances, and making the most out of the tools, materials, or information at your disposal. And so that, to me, really kind of, to a certain extent, made it seem like, and, and as I was looking into some of these things, really in order to be resourceful, you have to have like a source of of something to to pull the resource from right so <laughs> hence you, you the source just, and resource you can't not yeah you can't not know anything to and, and still be resourceful mm -hmm. and so uh at the beginning jared had mentioned macgyver and that's actually the, the, the that's the first person that i thought of and i, I <laughs> kind of yeah. thought of a couple different you know um uh, topics and, and and things um but actually, I remember watching some MacGyver, and I think as an adult, I went back and actually watched uh, a couple of the seasons and stuff. Just to, I just thought that was kind of cool. And then they actually did like a remake or something like that. I think um, they did, yeah, a little while ago. Uh, but I kind of went through and um, just skimmed through some of the top, let's say, uh, escapes or dangerous situations that MacGyver used resourcefulness to get out of. And so I was going to share a couple of those and then um, kind of, and then you can share a story, Jared. And then at the end, I kind of have some, some uh, things on how to be more resourceful. Yeah. So hit us, uh, hit can, us with the MacGyver. We build, build that into our creed. So yeah, uh, some things from, from MacGyver, some situations that he got out of. And so one of the things was he diffused a bomb with a paperclip. So he used he was in a situation where it was like an IED on the side of the road or something like that, and he used a paper clip and a chocolate bar wrapper to defuse uh, a bomb by short circuiting the electrical components of the of the bomb. Dang. Uh, whether it must have been not a very sophisticated bomb, but another one <laughs> that he did, and I remember this episode. He used he created a hot air balloon uh, to escape kind of where they were in. And so he used a, a big uh, plastic sheet or like a tarp and a propane tank. And he used the propane tank to like uh, heat up the air and the plastic sheet. And then it like lifted up and it like carried them 
carried him like <laughs> off and stuff. And I was just, okay, whatever. Um, <laughs> another one was he um, created tear gas. He was in a situation where he was like in this house and he just used a bunch of different household chemicals and mixing, you know, ammonia and bleach and this and that and the other. And he basically created like a, a, a canister of tear gas that he threw into a room um, to deter Aerosolize all, you know, all, all these, stuff. yeah, all these guys that were that were coming at him. Which that one was actually maybe even more believable because if you have a a knowledge of, oh, if I mix this chemical with this chemical, this is going to happen. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, you have to have some kind of a source of knowledge of chemistry in your mind. Yeah, and bang, you know, you can you can find things and you can use things. You know, I must scrape off a little bit of this deodorant in here and then put some <laughs> of this other stuff in here. You know. And create something that that's useful. So that was an interesting one. He he another one. He created a a glider. He was stuck on the top of this mountain, and he created a glider out of bamboo, paper, and duct tape. It is like <laughs> big bamboo, with like uh, shoots uh, stick, and then he he duct tape all sorts of stuff. Made a glider. Um, uh, you know, there was another one. Uh, he actually did this a couple times, but he would create smoke bombs again with the chemicals and. And there was one he was in, he had been thrown into this like really big pit, like a big hole. And he made like this makeshift ladder thing out of his belt and like these two other like sticks that were in the the bottom of the pit. And he made like this ladder thing that he used to climb out. So, (laughs) you know, I don't know. Obviously, all this stuff's freaking made up. But I mean, there had to be somebody there that was like, Okay, if you were, you know, let's just look, just just think about like the uh, the writers or whatever. You imagine this: you're sitting at the bottom of a of a 15 foot pit, dirt pit, and you can't get out. What can you use to get out? And everybody's like, oh well, maybe he could use his belt. Well, no, they, they probably think through a couple of things, and they might even think through what he did. Okay, what do I have on me? Okay, well, I've got a belt. Uh, there's these two pieces of, of wood over here. How could I combine these two things? to create some sort of ladder or climbing device for me, you know, Oh, there's a rope that's hanging down here. Can I use that? Um, how can I utilize my shirt or something to improvise some sort of, you know, string or rope or, and so it's taking inventory of the tools, the materials, and also the information, whether that's information of the environment, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's, you know, it reminds me of uh, remember the movie The Transporter with Jason Statham. Oh yeah. So he goes in and he's in like this uh, mechanic shop, and he uh, there's all these guys that are coming in and are going to fight him, and so he finds a, a a bicycle, and it's the kind of bicycle that has like the the cages for the, on the pedals mm-hmm. that you put your shoes into. Yeah. And so he kicks off the pedals of the bicycle and he puts his feet in the cages of those shoes on the pedals. So he's like standing, like walking on the pedals, almost like cleats. Yeah. And all these guys come running in. They're going to try to beat him up. So then he kicks over a barrel of used motor oil. And so now it's like all over the floor and all these guys are slipping and falling and they can't stand up because it's so slippery with the motor oil but he has these like cleats on that he got from this bicycle and they're like caged onto his foot and he's, he can walk around on there and he's not slipping at all. <laughs> and so it's just like using, he, he, you know, he saw the environment saw, okay, there's motor oil. If they, if I put that on the ground, then we're all going to be slipping around. Okay. Well, how can I not slip? Well, I need some sort of cleats. Okay. Well, what can I use in the area? Okay. Well, there's these pedals that I can break off this bike that I can use. Um, so it's just it, it, being resourceful, analyzing your environment, analyzing what's what's going to go on, what what's it, what's at your disposal, and um, using that. Yeah. So the, I think really kind of the only thing that you can potentially do to increase your resourcefulness is number one, you know, you have tools, materials at your disposal, and then information. So I think information, right, is something that you can definitely grow. Yeah, information it doesn't weigh anything and <laughs> it's hard to take away from somebody knowledge. Yeah. yeah you gotta have And it. so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was gonna say, so, so knowledge, you can always grow that materials. I mean, you're, you're kind of, 
you kind of have what's around, right? Mm-hmm. If you're in certain situations, but tools, a lot of times, you know, I know guys that what's, what's your EDC, right? Every day what do you carry, carry yeah. on you? What do you carry in your pockets? Do you carry a backpack? Do you carry, you know, uh, do you, do you carry a, a handcuff keys, you know, in, in your sock or I don't know. <laughs> what, what do you what what can you carry with you that do you carry a knife in your pocket all the time that that definitely can be useful so that's just yeah. kind of what i what i thought about resourcefulness yeah cool. i think resourcefulness is can be applied in so many different ways at work you know being resourceful at work being able to pull together stuff is 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 a great skill to have you know i just think of rambo first blood when he's out in the woods and he's like pulling together all the stuff you know Yep. Uh, that was a great one. Uh, yeah, just so many movies. One that I was thinking about, uh, one story that also is a movie actually, is uh, about Apollo 13. Uh, I, I went one definition of resourcefulness I liked was being resourceful is about is being able to see potential in things that others might consider useless. It's about finding opportunity in a situation where there doesn't seem to be any. Uh, one other, before I get into Apollo 13, one other movie, there's a, the newest Guardians of the Galaxy. It kind of tells the story of Rocket, who is this raccoon. And he's like this genius raccoon. And one of the cool things about him is he's genius and he's incredibly resourceful. And he'll just find parts and gizmos and gadgets everywhere. And he'll create like a gun or like a key or, or whatever. And so it's and like, it's kind of cool that they correlate or associate resourcefulness with that high intelligence level that he had. So Apollo 13, uh, crazy story. Uh, many of you, you know, this actually happened a while ago, so many people might not even know about Apollo 13. So it's one of the Apollo missions where they were going to go to the moon. These guys were going to go to the moon and evaluate the, the makeup of moon rocks and all this kind of stuff. The date is April 11th, 1970, when the uh, space Saturn V rocket they were strapped to takes off, and they're kind of headed towards the moon, right? So, three uh, the the spacecraft carried three people. Uh, it was John Lovell, John Swigert, and Fred Hayes on a mission meant to last uh, four days. But when they were two days in, uh, so they were only meant to last you know two more days. Uh, the mission went like it got all jacked up. So that's where Houston, we have a problem. Exactly. That's where that Houston, we have a problem comes from. John Lovell, famous words uttered, uh, Houston, we have a problem. So the problem was, is that when he, um, he reported an explosion that occurred in one of the oxygen tanks. So he had been conducting a routine task in which he turned on the fans in the fuel and oxygen tanks. Uh, this was meant to kind of stir up the oxygen to avoid it from separating into layers. So unbeknownst to him, uh, there was inside the second oxygen tank, there was a damaged wire that caught, that sparked. And if it's in a pure oxygen environment, uh, obviously that's going to be a lot of fuel. So it exploded uh, and severely damaged uh, a lot of the equipment on board. Uh, They were three guys 200,000 miles away from Earth uh, in a situation where they were kind of spinning out of control. There was oxygen leaking out, uh, their life support systems were damaged, uh, the temperature inside went down to 38 degrees Fahrenheit, so they're freezing cold. Um, there actually was, which made some of their food hard to eat, uh, was one of the articles I read, it was it made some of it inedible, which was interesting. Uh, it actually affected the electricity and lights, I mean, lots of things were affected by this uh, explosion. Obviously, their oxygen. So, they were able to communicate with the command control, you know, Houston, if you will. Uh, and these folks on the ground, just as much as the guys in the, in, in the spacecraft itself, they're like, okay, this mission has turned now into a retrieval mission. Like we want to try to get you guys back home safe. And so they really had to be super resourceful with what they're doing. So one of the things that they're, they're like, okay, this oxygen is leaking. We need to retrofit the lunar module, the lunar lander, to be able to house us because it was undamaged, but it was only built for two people because uh, only two of them were supposed to go down to the little lander and it was only enough for two people for two days. And so they, uh, so they figured out how to rig up a system there to where they could all go inside the lunar lander uh, and kind of survive in there. They, uh, 
then and another one of the issues is just um, the trajectory. Uh, they were all jacked up and they didn't have any propulsion or anything. So it's like, well, the ground crew helped them to get to a spot where like, well, if we blast it around here and we use some of the blasting uh, power from the lunar lander, we can actually go around the backside of the moon and use that like use that tr- um, gravitational pull to rip you back to Earth and sling you back to Earth. So that's what they did. Uh, and that took four days just to do that. So these guys are rationing their food and they're all low in oxygen. They're freezing cold. They're having to wear like their moon boots and stuff like that in uh, inside because they're freezing cold. And one of the cool things that they made, and this was kind of a, a prime example of their resourcefulness, is they created something s- small that they called the mailbox. So in, in the lunar module. And what it was, it was used to get rid of the carbon dioxide in the air, which obviously if you breathe, back in carbon dioxide, uh, it will kill you, right? You'll pass out. So they want to keep pure oxygen in there. And they have very low in oxygen, so they want to get rid of that carbon dioxide but uh, still keep uh, quality air in there without using too much. So they made it out of a plastic bag, a spacesuit hose, duct tape, and cardstock. And this kind of like this MacGyver-esque type uh, contraption that they made to really keep the CO2 levels down so that they could survive. And they actually all made it back uh, to Earth uh, and safely as well. And it was actually a, a big thing. A lot of the world was, uh, a lot of the world was kind of just on the edge of their seats, kind of hoping that these guys would get back. When they splashed down in the ocean, actually the Russian Two Russian ships showed up to kind of lend their support, which if you think about that time in the space race and everything, that meant that was a kind of a big deal that the Russians were there yeah. to, show, to show their support. So uh, kind of, I love that example of creativity. Uh, you could kind of, there's a movie called Apollo 13 uh, with Tom Hanks. It's a really wild, cool movie with kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. Many of probably our audience wasn't alive in 1970. Uh, and so, it's an interesting uh, story to look back on and just really see how these guys and also the folks on the ground were in such a tight situation where you're against the clock, you're running out of oxygen, and you got to come up with something to, to figure it out, you know. And they, they were able to do that and return those guys back home. So it's quite quite the miracle. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Yeah, I think I remember from the movie um, that they were like, okay, you know, this is the problem that we have. And they said, okay, well, what materials do they have on board that they can utilize? And so, you know, I, I think you know, a lot of these space shows have this too, but they almost have like an exact replica on Earth of what's going on up there. And they're like, okay, you should have, you know, here's, you know, here's this hose and here's this bag and here's this thing. And here's just like, this is all we have to use are these materials. And luckily for them, they were still able to communicate with, with Houston, right, with Earth, and yeah. come up with solutions to the problem, so they had more access to information, which is good. Um, I, if they would have just been kind of all by themselves, I, I mean, I don't think that they wouldn't have been able to to do it. But yeah, um, and, yeah, that's yeah crazy. are they are they trying to figure out how to change the trajectory and try to figure all that out? And they don't have time to figure out. There's just so many things that happened at one time, so it's like that team effort was really cool too. Yeah. So I think resourcefulness can be used in so many, we've only named the scratch the surface and these like kind of brave heroic ways, but resourcefulness can also just mean as simply as like, Hey, you know, I need to uh, figure out a way that I can, you know, do some of this stuff at work and take, do something I have to do at work and take my kid to their soccer practice. And I have to do this other thing and finding a way to do all those things at the same time. You know, sometimes that can, uh, or, or, that can be resourcefulness. And so there's yeah. lots of different ways that they can happen and manifest in your life. Yeah. I think uh, one of the, the maybe abilities of being resourceful is, is kind of a quick being a quick thinker, um, you know, seeing the problem, you know, it doesn't matter what the problem is, whether it's a math problem or the problem, like you said, I got to get to work at this time. I got to get the kids here at this time. I got to get here at this time. Okay. What do I need to do? Um, and so these are a couple of things of that I had uh, looked up and put together for how to be more resourceful and how to become more resourceful. And some of those are uh, embrace creativity, 
So obviously you have to be creative to uh, be resourceful. Think of a bunch of different things, develop a growth mindset. So uh, believing that you can develop these abilities and having a mindset that, that, that makes you resilient and willing to learn new skills, uh, build a diverse skill set. Maybe you should, you know, know how to start a fire and put a baby to sleep, right? you know have a diverse skill at the same set. time <laughs> yeah at the at the same time uh learn to prioritize that's always a good one what's the most important thing right now at this moment mm -hmm. staying informed keep keep up to date with local you know with the latest information if you're traveling to you know France to have you know look at some of the 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 news or what's going on there you know there's people that got you know, trapped on the Gaza Strip and they're, you know, or just be informed about what's going on and location you're at. Yeah. Maybe before you go camping or before you go hiking or something like that, look at the weather. Know that, that okay, if I get, I get lost, I get trapped or whatever. Oh, yeah, I looked at the weather and it's supposed to rain tonight. So I need to find shelter versus, oh, it's going to be nice and warm. I'm fine. Yeah. Um, so staying informed, practice problem solving. Don't just wait until you have to solve a problem to uh, practice it. You know, solve puzzles and and keep your skills sharp. I don't know, do Sudoku's. I don't know, whatever. Just keep <laughs> that mind keep that mind sharp. Uh, experiment and just try new things. Yeah. And the last one is just adapting to change. So just knowing that things are gonna never go exactly how you planned, and so you just need to be willing to to adapt. So. Yeah. I think uh, resourcefulness is something that we can all grow in. Every single person on this entire earth has the ability to become more resourceful by just increasing their capabilities, increasing their knowledge, increasing their situation, um, you know, paying more attention to what's around us. And I think in any situation, it can definitely add value to your own personal creed. Yeah. I agree, brother. Well said, well said. Well, for those of you out there listening to us, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. We appreciate you sticking with us and, and growing your creed with us. And let's build our creed together. All right, let's do it. <laughs>